Hi, welcome to thir uh, Throwback Thursday. <laughs> Throwback Throws Day. Throwbacks Thurs. Throw it on. <laughs> Out the window. Throwback Throws Day. <clears throat> that's what I'm calling it. Because um, that's the way we do it. That's the way we do it. We just don't say anything right. Uh, oh, that's about... a funny story. Go ahead. I don't know what you're talking about. I know. Anyway, uh, we were discussing and thought it would be a good idea to share with you guys um, of how we met. How we met. Oh. In the year 2000, I moved from California to... Um, Arkansas. Yes, that's the state. You really <laughs> do plan on interjecting quite a bit. You weren't even there. How do you know where I moved? No. Okay, sorry. <clears throat> so I moved from California all the way to Arkansas. I was 18 years old. And we got there in May. I moved in May. And like two weeks, I think, after we got there was senior camp for the Arkansas. Okay, so we go to camp and there was this redhead on the organ. And he was very, very, very good. And then I was asked if I wanted to sing uh, with the group or whatever on one of the services there. And I said, okay. And this redhead that I had seen playing the organ, I also saw him playing sax in the band. He played the saxophone in the band. He had a solo. It was all fancy. And... <laughs> So, like, I noticed, and I noticed he had, like, a lot of friends at camp and all that kind of stuff, and I didn't like how he wore his hair, <laughs> and I was not attracted to redheads. Like, I did not think redheads were cute. I was asked to sing, so he was singing, and then at the, at the altar call or whatever, he was singing, and I was singing, and he kept, like, doing, like, all this weird stuff, and I kept looking at him, like, what are you doing? And... Because I didn't know who he was. Nobody said who his, what his name was. I didn't know anything about him. So I go back home. And we lived in Stevens, Arkansas. Which is about this big. And so that was in June. Mm -hmm. We I saw him. And then there was a there was back a to rally. school youth rally. And I was asked to sing at that. And... I go up there to sing, and this person, like, comes in the door and goes up on the platform and starts playing the bass. And I'm like, what? That was not something when, how, where, I'm a preacher's kid, which a lot of people probably don't know. I'm a preacher's kid. And well, because I was I, motioned up there to play the bass. I didn't see you motioned up there, though, and I'm just like, mm. he don't even know what song I'm singing. What is he doing? Like, I had no idea. But I knew, I recognized him from camp. And I wanted a job, and they were saying, why don't you go over there and apply for a job? So, I was like, okay, because I didn't know any, you know, I didn't know anything or anybody. So, I go there, and I apply for a job. So, here I have seen him at camp. I'm dressed as nicely as I can be at camp. We're at a youth function, so I'm dressed as nicely as I can be there. So, I got an application. I filled it out, turned it in. And I saw this like whirlwind. I don't know. You were like all noisy, and I don't know at all. And I was, I did, was like, okay, whatever. Didn't acknowledge me or anything. So I go like, go, and I started like the next day or something. I knew I was working in the deli of the store, but I didn't know like what my job would be or anything. So I come to work in this dark purple jumper, dark corduroy purple jumper. This was in October, and I had, had, by the end of the day, so you came to work after you got out of school that day, mm -hmm. to do, he was the assistant, night assistant manager, and I was, I never worked, well, it was my first, it was my second job, it was my second job, my first job was working in a clothing store, and then my second job was working in the deli of this grocery store, and I was a mess, I had flour in my hair, I had bleach on my clothes. I smelt like fried chicken and pizza. Like, I was a mess. I fell in love. Oh, you fell in love, huh? Do you remember what you said? You're going to like working for me, Mike. <laughs> like, really? 
I am covered in flour and bleach and I smell like fried chicken and pizza and I was exhausted and frazzled. So. Just wanted to know the real you, I guess. <laughs> that was not even who I was. I know. Should have called me Bob. So you were in your third year of college mm -hmm. when we started dating. That's right. So you were assistant manager. Mm hmm. And he would come in like most days at from five ish. Most days. Five, yeah, five fifteen, five twenty. Because like Jasmine was over at five on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and I'd have to blow in there, you know, by five thirty. Uh, otherwise, I got out at like two, and I, I started my day at three thirty to eight, eight or something like yeah, that. Yeah, the store was up like until that. eight. So he always made a point to come back to the deli and talk with me, but he was always very serious, very focused, and like would have serious conversations. So I was starting to warm up to him because at first I was like, what in the world? So I was starting to warm up to him, and he was always very calm. And Except for the whirlwind part. That yeah, that one mentioned. whirlwind. It was just the one time though, but then you know, <laughs> were kind of you would sometimes be kind of crazy with the with the guys and stuff. But all the, there was a few girls that were there, and they were always like Kelsey, like she Kelsey's so sweet. Kelsey, all this, and I was just going whatever. <laughs> like y'all, this redhead, I just don't know. <laughs> So he would come back there and help me make pizzas, but he had purple eyes. Like, they were so blue, they were purple. And if you will remember, in a previous video, we have brown eyes. I had never seen anyone wear colored contacts, ever. And I remember telling my mom, his eyes are so blue, they're purple. And my mom was constantly trying to get me to like Kelsey. She was madly in love with Kelsey. My brothers, or no, Justin didn't like you, but Jared really liked you, and my dad really liked you. So a few times she took me home from work because I needed to, yeah. I always worked the late shift, and so we'd visit and talk, and then, so we got to know each other for about a month, just visiting and talking and being serious, and then for some reason, how did it happen that you owe grandma money? Grandma, the store, you, no, no. I didn't owe grandma you no, need, yeah. that's what it was. They asked me to call and ask Kelsey. They worked this all. I've forgotten about this. They asked me to call the store and ask Kelsey to bring over some ice cream that was in the freezer for Grandma. Grandma wanted ice cream and to put it on my charge account. Try. That's what it was. So he shows up at the door with some ice cream, and my parents are like, well, invite him in. So I asked him in. So it, were, it was kind of weird because we were outside of our comfort of yeah. like the store, and Jared and him started acting crazy, and I was like, "What just happened?" <laughs> like my eyes got like <coughs> kind of freaked a little bit. So then November, well, I'll back up, back up. <clears throat> you asked me out on a date, and for a Friday night, you asked me out on a date. And I said I would go out on a date with you, and then that place burnt down. Yeah. So we never got to go out on a date. So that was before you asked me to be your girlfriend. You had, you did ask me out on a date. That's right. But on November 10th, Jared said that, and so I told him, I was like, oh, Jared wants to know if my boyfriend will take me home. Oh, that little brat. Like, something like that. Or he could hear him on the phone or something. Like, there was some kind of conversation where I was like, oh, well, wow, everybody, it was other, The other guys at work were saying... You know, it's your girlfriend, your girlfriend, and saying no, stuff like that. Always like, stuff like that. And I was always embarrassed. <coughs> I was always embarrassed. And I was like, well, they're calling us boyfriend and girlfriend. And I said, well, you don't. You know, like, Jared. Want to make it official? You said, or what no, I'm you, said, you said, you know that thing Jared said? You said, you know that thing Jared said. I was like, yeah. He goes, you wanna? I was like, okay. Like, he's 20 years old. And he doesn't even know how to like completely ask me to be his girlfriend. I'm like, okay. So we then we every time like how our schedules were, he worked every day but Sunday until eight o'clock at night. And we never had time off together. And you were the piano player at church, so mm -hmm. your Sundays were shot. Like 
you had no time at all. So we had, we never could go on a date. We tried and tried, never could go on a date until one day. There was snow. And it, all the lines were down, so the store got shut down. So we decided to have our first date. At Chin Chin's. At Chin Chin's. And we didn't leave a note. We didn't leave a note. <laughs> we trouble. With Justin. Like, I don't even think we held hands. Because we, like, you were, like, so awkward around me. Like, I don't think we even held hands. I'm awkward. I'm an awkward person. You were very awkward. So, okay, so then... We Still got, awkward. Yeah, and then I guess the, the lights had come back on, so everyone was trying to hunt us down. And we had so much fun. We were just walking and just getting to know each other because we really hadn't had time together outside of the store. Um, I got... Was trying to hurry up and get the veggies ready for the next day in the deli and we had this cu this cuber where you put the vegetables in there and cube it it has a grid of blades of knives that you put your vegetable on and you take this little thing and you slam it down and, and it goes can. in between those things and it just makes cube out of bell pepper or whatever yeah she got her thumb i don't thumb know how well the, you can tell my thumb it's like a little notch it's, I mean, it's squared oh. <laughs> it's seriously squared my thumb so mr freak out over blood had to help me or try to help me clean it up and the next day i was leaving to go to berryville because my dad was trying out for a church so we didn't i don't know how i survived without passing out for a whole weekend but when we got back, Kelsey took me to the doctor, mm -hmm. and we got it checked out, and they took the nail off, which, oh my God, you have no idea how happy I was when they took that nail off, because it was like, I kept my thumb up like this for the whole weekend. Like, I don't know how I survived it. I really don't know how I, I don't know what I did. <laughs> I must have had a really high pain tolerance. But, um, anyways, he took me in, got it, we got it taken care of, and then, like, the next weekend, we had the Gaither concert. And I was trying to fix my hair. I I asked him to well, go to the... Well, first of all, you need help getting your thumb rebandaged. Well, didn't hold you? on. So I asked him to go to the Gaither concert. We got it all scheduled. Justin was going to drive, and me and you were going to ride with Justin, and we were going to meet up with the Emersons and go eat dinner and then go to the concert. Well, I invited him. I told him that I, there was an extra ticket if he wanted to come. So we, he comes over to ride with me and Justin, mm -hmm. and I was trying to get ready. I had my hair was just all disarrayed, and I needed help rebandaging my thumb. And so he rebandaged my thumb, and that's when I fell in love with him. Was when he rebandaged my thumb. That was very gentle, very he tender. He was very sweet and gentle, helping me rebandage my thumb. And then I needed help finishing my hair, and I don't know where my mom was, but you helped me finish my hair. Yep, sprayed it and sprayed fluffed it, it and mm -hmm. patted it because it was all a bunch big old hairy, halo of curls. So that's when I, my heart really turned over and melted, and I started falling in love with him. And that's when I knew he would take oh, care of me forever. Her eyes were so brown that day. They were brown that day. Oh, I did fix you dinner the one time, too. You came over. Oh, yeah. And I fixed you that chicken divine. Oh, thing. yeah. And, oh. and my parents, my parents, they went out pizza in every Sunday. Your dad would like, say, do you up. want pizza in or pizza Well, he was up. talking about that for, for a take home, but we always went out to pizza in. Oh. For pizza out, it's pizza in. Uh, <laughs> that was her slogan. Um, on Sundays after church, Sunday mornings. I don't know what well, that's just what they wanted to do they you know it was just and so um uh i was like all right we're going to pizza in i said well i'm going actually i'm going to abby's house she's cooking and she's like oh you know how my mom does. do you remember your dad asked you about me because you were spending so much time at my house yeah i i've been spending a lot of time at her house Anyway, every night was, after work, you'd come over and yeah, fall asleep. Yeah, fall asleep on her. We'd be watching Gaither videos or whatnot. I'd fall asleep on her, be driving See, home. People wonder why the Gaither stuff is so important. It was like the foundation of our marriage. Exactly. <laughs> of our dating. Of our dating. <laughs> Bill Gaither didn't save my marriage, but he helped make it. All right. Uh, be room? driving home, blurry eyed, about 1 30, 2 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, and then have to go to school. Yeah. I don't know how you made straight A's. I don't know how. Mm. Lord. <laughs> but we was actually sitting around the dinner table. It was one Saturday afternoon. I don't think I had, or maybe it was, yeah, it was like an afternoon. I didn't have to go to work till later on that evening. 
uh, something of that nature. And so uh, <laughs> Blake was at work, but we're just kind of sitting around the table, my dad and my mom and me, and I was fixing my burger. I remember I was eating burgers. And uh, and uh, Dad says, so, so you really liking this Abigail? I says, think she might be my future daughter-in-law? And I said, yep, yeah, probably. And he's like, whoa, son, I didn't expect that. <laughs> so abruptly answering, you know, I mean, because it's just, I mean, it wasn't like a, mm, it was just, yep, yeah, probably. And just, whoa, you know, I did not expect that. So. Well, and we had both been praying mm -hmm. for a mate, but I was at the point where I was like, you know what, I'm done praying. I just want a friend. I really just want friendship because I was just so tired. Yeah, she quit praying for the mate. I started praying for the mate. Yeah, and here we go. Well, there you go. That's what happened for us. So then when my, while my parents were trying out and very, no, 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 no. I came, how did I end up at your house that one time? Was it a snowstorm? It was a snowstorm, and I was at your house for some reason. I think it was just to meet your parents and have dinner with your parents. They I think so. Me over for dinner and then the weather to get turned. To know me. Oh, I had never felt so awkward because I did not know. <laughs> I did not know them, and I was still really a stranger to the state, the whole entire state. And I was not. However, how I grew up in California was so different. Like in Stevens, Arkansas, I was walking across the. St I was walking on the sidewalk down the street, and someone, this elderly lady, crossed the street and came over to me to tell me that I should not be outside walking with a wet head, and I just was like, I had never in my life had someone leave a leave a store. It was the drugstore. She left the drugstore and crossed the street over to tell me I did not need to be outside with a wet head, like freaked me out so I was really not used to people being all up in my business basically and not that his parents were it's just it was so they weren't like that at all it was just I was so like I didn't know how to talk to people like I didn't it was just so different and I tried to just be myself and I would get these looks and these so I just felt awkward and besides it was my first time to meet the parents basically like I met your mom at church that one time and then I just, the next time I saw her was at your house. So that, it was mm -hmm. just, and they were so nice and they were so kind and made sure I had everything I needed. And, but the storm got worse. I don't even know what we ate. Like, I don't even remember at all. Um, yeah. The storm had gotten worse. And but she, but my mom called her parents and said, I don't want either one of y'all or her or, or, or Kelsey getting out or anything like that. She can just stay the night here if that's okay with you. I said, yeah, I fine, whatever. And so you parents. stayed in my room and I stayed in Blake. You in the room Blake's Blake, room, so. yeah. You had like eight or ten fans in your bedroom. He had so, you forgot about this. He yeah. had so many fans. At like, first, like, it kind of sounds ridiculous, but now I had every right to do that in that stuffy It was house. really hot. We had our first Christmas. And you got me Lucky You perfume, and you got me a little nightlight with a rose on it, and it was so pretty. I, I think it still works. It's somewhere. Mm -hmm, yeah. I still have the bottle of perfume. It was the sweetest, most thoughtful thing. And then what did I get you? You got me a sax and swing CD uh, by Dennis Sully, which I still have that somewhere, too. It's a really good CD. Um, Toucan Sam slippers with a nose on it that was, and so you're walking, from, rah, rah. but they were so cool. I we just finally got rid of them before pictures we moved. Everywhere. Before we moved here to this house, that's 15 this house. years old. Yeah, 15 year old slippers. <laughs> they had holes in them. <laughs> in the back. And what else did I get you? Uh, chocolate covered cherry. Chocolate covered cherries. That was your favorite candy. Mm -hmm. Christmas time. I love that snot in the middle. Lovely. So then we got to spend a good month together getting to know each other before I moved to Berryville. And that was seven hours away, six hours away? Six hours. Six hours away I moved. And he... About five hours and 15 minutes to five hours and 30 <laughs> minutes if you don't stop to pee. You don't stop to go to the bathroom. Don't drink anything before you go. Oh, and this is back when <coughs> they had, you had the microphone. That's how you would talk to me. I wrote you letters. You wrote me, I think, maybe one letter. 
I would spray my perfume. Dialpad.com kept us going <laughs> because I would dial, we would connect on the internet. It was a tough online modem, mind you. And I would dial, you know, I would dial her phone number from that website and we would talk. And so it's like, hey, how are you? Mm-hmm. Fine. Mm-hmm. And so there was that delay, <laughs> but you had to get used to it. But that That's was, why it takes you so long to have conversations. <laughs> I cannot believe it. <laughs> that was good. That's why you still take so long to have a conversation. You have need that five second delay. So we were so we started talking about getting married that during that month. So for some reason we started talking about getting married and stuff. And you came up for my nineteenth birthday with the week the week between February fifth and February fourteenth, that weekend, whatever weekend that mm-hmm. was. In two thousand one. And my family knew you were coming, and they were excited that he was going to propose. But I told Kelsey, I was like, you better plan on going out to eat with my dad and talking with my dad first. I mm-hmm. do remember telling you that. Mm-hmm. And I did. So you came in late Friday night, after because you came in after you got off work on Friday. And so Saturday morning, you went out to breakfast with Dad mm-hmm. and talked. Yeah. Took him to breakfast at McDonald's. Did you pay? Mm-hmm. You did? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. And then afterwards, um What did he say? He just talked about how stubborn and strong I mean <laughs> <laughs> No, he did talk about how very strong willed you were and how very um um just a strong strong person you are, but he just said, you know, appreciate you asking. And uh, I would also, you know, um request that you Pass it by her mom, too, you know, out of respect. I said, I, said, I can do that, too. And which I did ask her, too. Did you really? Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. Yeah. What mom said? She said, sure. Give me a big one. She gave that, that little giggle that she yeah. did when she does it. Yes. So all day long, <laughs> so after they got back from breakfast, all day long, my family waited for Kelsey to ask me to marry him. They took us to Branson, and we went and did this, and we went and did that, and looked at this and this, all this kind of stuff. And he had the ring in his pocket, and he did not ask. And then we had a dinner with all these people came over for dinner, and he still had not asked. And I, my mom said it was my company coming, and I had to clean the house. So I cleaned, and the she had bleach products, and they... I'm allergic to them, and so they got up in my my sinus passageways, and I ended up sick. So by the time everyone left Saturday, and it was just Kelsey and me and Jared visiting, I was so, like, my eyes were glazed over. I could hardly see him at all. And I remember you got down on one knee. And he started saying all these beautiful words, and I was so out of it. I just remember being like, he's saying such nice things. I think he's proposing. Like, I remember those thoughts, like, going through my mind, and you were wearing a white t-shirt, and there was, like, this halo around you. Like, you looked so, like, you were glowing. And I was just, it was probably... I waited for everybody else to go to bed. (laughs) You did. I think Jared was almost asleep, too. And... So we still had ne- we had never kissed. I think we held hands, but we had never kissed. And so when I said yes, he gave me a hug and he kissed me right here on the head. Me, and then we were all so deliriously happy, and Jared was happy that we went to Walmart. We went to Walmart <laughs> to celebrate. I didn't go in and tell my parents. And I bought a light blue pair of pants, wind pants, I think. Something like that. Yeah, I think you did. I think you did. We just walked around like all like, where are you gays? Oh wow. And he hugged me, kissed me on the forehead. A sideways hug. I don't think he even gave, even gave me a real hug. I don't think I gave you a real hug. Did you give me a real hug? No, oh, Saturday. What, no, what did we drive well, to your parents? Well, we, after we left Sunday, yeah, we left on Sunday. After Sunday morning service. Because we got there And people at my church thought I went up there to elope. Oh, that's right. They thought we eloped. And, and um, anyway, uh, t- I remember uh, Tim had said, Tim Martin, had said uh, to my sister, 
Well, Cuss has done gone up and done it, hadn't he? And, like, what? and I remember I was driving on my way home, and I get a phone call with my mom. And he's like, "Well, um, do you have something you want?" Did, is, to did you get married? I was like, "No." So I you got didn't engaged. even tell your parents that you were coming to propose. Mm -mm. You didn't even tell your parents. So you didn't even ask your parents if they were okay with us getting married. Mm -mm. Really? Wow. So we got engaged in February. We went and announced our engagement. And it was the weekend. Timothy Spell was there. Timothy Spell was there, that's right. I got to play with him. You got to play and I sing played, with him. He played piano while and sang while I played bass and yeah. Jonathan Hill was on drums. And both yeah. we were tight too. You guys were awesome. It was awesome. I thought you played organ while he played. On one song. On one did. song. Oh, okay. Well. Anyways, I just remember it was a very good and I stayed down there for two weeks, mm -hmm. and I sobbed like a baby when it was time for me to go home. I did not want to leave him. I was ready to get married that minute. I missed him. I missed him like crazy. I was not ready to be apart from him. So then I, we saw each other once a month after that for a weekend. We'd see each other for a weekend once a month. I went to work at Walmart Deli and sliced my other thumb at the deli. On the... On the t meat slicer. Filled a bag with blood. That was fun. Woo! I just cringed. Did you cringe? <laughs> um, and then, so I would get phone cards, and I would call him, and we were saving up money to get married. We were going to get married in November because I wanted a Thanksgiving wedding. And then his mom, who's a teacher, decided we did not need to have a Thanksgiving wedding, that we needed to have a summer wedding, and offered to help us throw together a quick wedding for August. So everyone thought I was pregnant because we moved up the wedding in June. We moved up the wedding in June to August. And got married August 3rd. We moved into this little two-bedroom, one-bath house. And then you went back to school. Two week, no, the week after we got married, you went back to school. The week after our honeymoon. I mean, it was our honeymoon week. And then you went to school the Monday. We got married on Friday. No, I think it's a. I think it may have had a week or two. Mm -mm. No. We got married on a Friday. We stayed in. Oh, that's right. I had to start. We, we started in, the band rehearsals. Yeah. Which I took you with me. I went to a lot of school with you. Mm -hmm. I did. I enjoyed going to class with you. They call me Miss Kelsey, which is where I got. Hi, hey, Miss Kelsey. Where I got my. Your handle. My handle, Miss Kelsey. That's what they called me. Was Miss Kelsey. Because I didn't know her her first name. I don't think they ever asked. Mm -hmm. they just Hi, Miss Kyle. Hey. It's 1139. I think we're going to end this throwback Thursday. That this, we barely have any Thursday left, so I think we've thrown it all the way back. As we've far thrown as it as far as it's going to throw? So. I love you. I love you. And I enjoy being married to you. Mm, I love being married to you. And I hope you guys are enjoying these throwbacks. Yeah. We're, I think we're enjoying rem mm -hmm. reminiscing. Yeah. Fun. You know, whenever I get off work, I, unless I have to go to the store, I come straight home. Every night. Every night. You because this is where I want to be. She's what she's what I, I I long to come home to her and my my boys. That's where I want to be. So. I always know where you are, not because I have to, but because you're always considerate enough to let me know where mm -hmm. you're at. You come home for lunch every day. Yep. You spend every t all, every bit of time. I have no business going anywhere else. Mm -hmm. You're a family man. Mm-hmm. And I'm a family woman. Woman. Oh, that's one thing, though, with working grocery stores is the country music. Uh, I don't think it ever leaves your brain. I don't think it ever does. But uh. Anyways, I think we're done. And we hope that you all enjoyed this throwback. And hopefully it's not too long. Oh, um, but I've enjoyed reminiscing with you. Yep. And we will see you tomorrow. <clears throat> <laughs> Did you hear that? Felt it too. Oh, you felt it? Mm. Are you going to snuggly with me? Mm -hmm. Are we going to be cozy? That's what I did with her. Uh huh. Yeah, I'm going to cry. Uh huh. How's my teeth? Great. Great? Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Let me see yours.
You want a story you can tell? I thought we were going to talk about how we met. Yeah, do you know that story? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> Sorry. That probably I probably wasn't. don't. Probably wasn't that funny. But it sounded you funny. tell it and I'll interject. Oh, you'll just interrupt me. Well, I was wearing a metallic shirt. I'm kidding. Okay. 